Hello friends, welcome back. Want to confidently explain the .NET Core microservices concept in your next interview? Join us as we dive into essential questions and provide concise explanation and helping you choose the right answers so you can articulate your knowledge effectively. So come with the delay, let's get started. I logged into this website and this website is actually our last full stack development video where we developed extensive wonderful application with angular.net core and azure services so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to course choose the dotnet core and i'm going to specifically talk about the microservices so the reason why i'm going to do like this is this way you know how to write your exams you can also confidently come back here and you know take up your own test to see uh, to evaluate yourself all right not only that i will also explain you what exactly that question is what concept you should know so that you can answer by yourself nobody is going to ask you uh, you know uh, pre written answers for any of their questions so come let's get started so here as you go i'm going to choose uh, whatever i have i'm going to choose the practice mode and practice mode is going to help us which i'm going to show you now so the very first question right this is again related to microservices so in a microservice architecture how should you be sharing the how should data be shared between services all right so before we get into any of these uh, interview questions so let's quickly take a look at what is microservices so microservices is nothing but small small services that does some work okay they are nothing related to technology they are actually architectural patterns for example okay for example if you go to amazon okay so amazon has lot of features right they have ordering they have cart they have wish list they have products they, you can just keep going now instead of building all of this stuff into one project or one application what this microservice will do is they will build a service like service means that contains um, you know few endpoints and let's say order services okay a microservices that is specifically meant for ordering when you say ordering order related stuff viewing orders placing orders you know finding out the history of the orders all of those order related stuff alone that will be a separate microservice right so like that in order to build this website they will have n number of microservices working together to fulfill a portal so basically that is what microservices so in this itself you know if i have to split into microservices i can do exam writing is its one microservices handling users which is profile and all of those is microservices like that i can keep you know splitting into small small services now let's come back to the question so you at least know what is microservices now so in a microservice architecture how should data be shared between services that is what the question is let's go over all of these things based on what i just mentioned let's guess what you not guess let's let's try to answer it through a shared database via service to service communication on event using global variables by copying tables between database okay these are the options now i will also show you what if i choose something wrong which is fine right so let's say i choose this is via service to service communications or via event let's see what happens okay the answer is correct now the good part of this kind of uh, the way we study here is after you answer yourself like just read the question as you progress you are able to answer by yourself or at least choose the right one and then if you open up the explanation it will tell you this sh very short description that you need to tell it in the interview so each microservices own its own database that's how microservice architecture works okay so when i say product orders they have their own database but eventually they will communicate with based on events and other stuff so if sharing is needed we use api calls or event driven architecture for messaging like you know that's how services will communicate for example again i'll just tell you one more example right let's say you place an order when you place an order it goes and um sits in a queue or it triggers an action 
and then it goes and sits in the database maybe some other queue will be listening an order has come and then it starts its work like logic apps so a lot many stuff goes on okay so let's stick to this questions let's go to the second one our next one is which library is commonly used in dotnet core Im to implement the resiliency this is how they will ask you okay they might ask you uh, you know like okay how do you implement resilience in dotnet core or in microservices you just need to know what they're talking about so let's go over the you know options so serilog let's talk about serilog serilog is basically a logging mechanism right like similar to n phase um n log or serilog is one of the most popular logging so definitely this is not the answer swagger again it just reads the endpoints and shows you the documentation of endpoints so this is also not an answer poly poly is basically uh can be used for retrying and all of those things meet Mediate R is basically the CQRS pattern. So let's say I'm going to show you if I choose something wrong. Okay. And then we'll see the explanation. So let's say we'll go with um, resilience, right? So let's go with this. Let's say, right. This is what happens if I choose something wrong. Okay. So the answer is poly. See, use poly for adding retries. Like I said, poly is used for retrying mechanism, right? Circuit breakers and fallback logic. All of those things are applicable during uh you know using poly i'm not sure i use this in the um, in our example of the dotnet core but probably next time i will include this how poly will uh poly will work uh, with the retry logics all right so this is how it works right if you go wrong it's okay you just need to know what is right and what is wrong and you should also know how to answer it and more details are here okay so always you'll get this kind of uh, explanation and uh, reference links now let's move on to the next one how do you register a typed http client in dotnet core for communicating between microservices okay so basically what they're asking us if you go to our uh, you know any of our dotnet uh, core project so basically here uh, in the program.cs this is where we we configure the dependency injection right so whatever you configure here is normal uh, the interface and its implementation but question here is how do you do for http client that is what the question is meaning um this is not the regular one right this is all about uh, a service that talks about the http client so if you have if you've already guessed what is the answer answer should be this because this is different this is middleware see services dot this is different this is different let's see this is the answer so the so registration of this add HTTP client, what makes the HTTP calls? Okay, so this is the right answer. Now let's go to the next one. Which of the following best describe microservice architecture? I already explained to you what this microservice, right? So let's say, see, based on what I described in the first, right? This is not a single code base for all functionality. This is absolutely wrong. An architecture that breaks down the application into smaller independent deployable service. Like I said, product separate order separate are this separate all are separate so this should be the right answer so when somebody is asking you a question you should first understand what they're asking and you can answer it in your own way but correctly so that's why uh, i'm trying to explain you and also help you to choose the right answer this should be the right answer and it also tells why there's the explanation there's a reference link so you can go and study the next one what is the main responsibility of uh, of an api gateway in the microservice architecture okay let me first explain you two important concepts here api gateway and microservice like this right so now let's say the site okay has okay you know what this is too big uh maybe for realistic okay we, we'll talk about realistic one right so they deployed like you know they, they split this whole portal into let's say 50 different microservices order product address etc etc now from the ui they don't communicate with the backend directly. What will happen is there'll be a um, you know middle layer that's called the gateway. It's like you go to apartment, right? You go to a very big apartment. An apartment will have 400, 500 units, which means 500 houses. Imagine all of those 500 houses as a uh, endpoints. Now, when you come, whom do you face first? All right. So let's take an example. Okay. So this is apartment, right? So when you come here, this is where you enter. You have so many houses okay 
Now what happens is if a courier guy comes or you know a parcel delivery comes, he comes here, it he gives to the security, right? Then security based on the apartment number he delivers it to the right apartment, correct? Exactly the same thing. API gateways are nothing but a gateway where the front end will come and talk to the gateway, and gateway knows where the request should be routed. If you go and talk to uh, slash product slash product slash five, it knows it needs to go to this one where the product API decides. Okay, that is what it is. So an API gateway in terms of microservice architecture, what is it? What is its responsibility? So let's answer it based on what I said. Managing internal database, definitely no. Uh, we didn't explain that. Handling authentication, routing, and aggregation of requests. Exactly. The gateway is responsible for authenticating the request, like verifying, authentication, verifying, routing the request, and aggregation of requests. Aggregation of requests is nothing but it collects the information and then send back to the caller. That's what exactly it is. An API gateway centralizes the request routing, load balancing, security, and can even aggregate the result from multiple services. All right. So when you go for an interview, you should know what is gateway, API gateway. What does it role play in the microservice architecture? This all proves you that you have knowledge and you're ready for taking a uh, you know better role uh, than a fresher. Now, next, what is the most common method of communication between microservices in .NET Core? Again, how do they communicate? We already saw in the second question, I believe they talk to services to services, right? So REST API over HTTP. Nothing else matches. Let's see. Oops. Exactly. Based on what I explained, they can communicate like everything is endpoint, right? One endpoint calls another endpoint over the HTTPS. So that's why uh, this is the answer. And there's an explanation here. REST APIs over HTTP are the most common and common and language agnostic way of microservice to talk to each other. And let's say, my, you know, RapidMQ. Um, you know, there are many other messaging servers like Azure, Mes um, Azure, uh, you know, service bus, so many stuff, right? So that's how it works. So you should know what it is. And last two, and then next one in large microservice architecture, how do services discover each other dynamically? Very great. The, it's, it's easy to ask these kind of questions. Not exactly like that, but you know, concept around this area. So how do they discover? That's what they're asking. So hard-coded URL, no, definitely no, it's wrong. Service discover tools like uh, console or Eureka or shared folder environment variables. Mm, let's go with this. That's the answer. So we use this service discovery. So services can be registering themselves and discover other services dynamically. All right. Last but not least, how can you secure the communication between microservices? Always, always securing microservices, right? Securing the communication is over the HTTPS. You see this? If I go here, if I go to this end, let's say, if I go to this end, you see this, what it is, HTTPS. All right, so hypertest transfer protocol secured. So SSL layer is applied. So that any communication between, um, you know, this website and the backend will be encrypted. Okay, so answer should be this. Mutual TLS is another concept of verifying the caller and the sender or JWT. We use this JWT concept here, um, you know, uh, JSON web token. All right, so that should be the answer. And it also tells you what it is, why it is. All right, so we have come to the last question. Microservices, this is far enough um, to clear the interview. These are like, we have one beginner, intermediate and advanced questions. If you do so, please give um, an honest feedback here. And this is how we finished exam. You can come here, check. We were one wrong. You remember? Polly was the answer. And that's why we are 88% out of 100. Let's go back. Let's see how we can review it. So you can go to this view in practice mode. You can also check here. It'll explain you. Don't worry if you have missed it. You can come back here. Always come back and check what is our answer you, you wrote. All right. So you can keep going like this. And all the eight questions will be answered here. And finally, you can come back and check your all of your tests. You can take any number of tests here. 
lot of important questions and many concepts will be added um you know frequently so come here test your knowledge and also uh, go through other videos in my channel so you get more knowledge on the real time questions not only questions real time implementation and i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video just hit that like button subscribe to my channel share this with your friends and social media help grow this channel and stay tuned guys i'll see you in the next important video bye bye thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding